Hello website friends, this is Pauline Wiles and today we're going to take a first look at the new Fluid Engine editor from Squarespace. So what is Fluid Engine? Basically put, it's a new drag and drop editor that's much more intuitive for laying out your pages and it gives some nice design features. So it's available inside Squarespace 7.1. If you're on an earlier version of Squarespace, you won't see it. And basically the difference is here's a classic section where we've got some text, a button, a photo on the right hand side here and a spacer element in the middle. Compare that to a new fluid engine page section where I have uh, just turned on the grid here so that you can see we've got um, similar pieces of content on the page, but we have the opportunity now to overlap items and there's a drag and drop grid for moving things around. So um, no spaces here. If you want to move something across or down or sideways, you can just drag and drop. So I think this is going to be very popular with Squarespace users. So that's a quick overview of what Fluid Engine looks like. Let's see how you might get started with it. My encouragement for you, if you are new to using Fluid Engine, don't just um, go and start playing with one of your existing website pages. I encourage you copy the page and then you've got a safe area to experiment. So from the left hand side inside your page navigation area, you can click on the gear icon alongside any page, come down on this general tab and choose duplicate page, confirm that. And then here you are, you've got um, a copy of that page. Um, it's not linked for now, so you know that you can go ahead and edit this and uh, you're on safe territory. So what does that look like then? Your classic Squarespace page sections, so those are the sections that you had built before Fluid Engine was released. These uh, remain as they were when you built them, but you now see this upgrade button in the left-hand corner of a section. So it's worth knowing that section by section on your page, Fluid Engine may be enabled or it may not be enabled. So this is not something that happens for the whole page. It's something that you do um, one section at a time if you're converting pages to Fluid Engine. I showed you a moment ago the difference between the sections. So you know you're in a classic section if you see the upgrade button in the top left, you might see spaces on your page. Um, and when you press G for grid, nothing happens. On the other hand, inside a new Fluid Engine page section, you've got an add block button on the left hand side. Pressing on your keyboard G, G for grid toggles the grid on and off like that. You can see this guide now um, behind here. And as I said, you've got nice opportunities for overlapping content if you want to do that. So it's up to you to come inside um, a classic Squarespace section and choose this upgrade button if you want to move it to Fluid Engine. There is no extra charge for this, so I think upgrade is a bit of a funny word, but that's what this means. It means convert this section to Fluid Engine. So we'll do that. If at any stage you then decide that things have not gone to plan and you don't like the results, and in fact you, uh, you wish you hadn't clicked that upgrade button, if you come back out of your page, um, come to the top left, and instead of saving your changes, say discard changes, then that will serve you well. That gets you back to where you were before and the, uh, the conversion that you did of that section to Fluid Engine will not be remembered. Okay, but let's assume that you do in fact want to continue playing with Fluid Engine. Um, in a previous classic section, we had the plus icon showing up wherever it was possible to add a new piece of content. And that then gave us, gave us the choice of what type of block to add there. In Fluid Engine, there are no more plus signs to be found. Instead, you will always choose add block when you want to um, add a new piece of content or a new block to your page. 
And then you can simply drag and drop so that the text, in this case, um, arrives on the piece of the page where you want it to go. Now, I love to work with the grid showing. So again, press G to toggle the grid on and off. That's a super handy way of uh, knowing what's where on your layout. A good tip, do not have your blocks overlapping unless that's actually what you intend to happen. So over here, I've taken the opportunity to have one image here, the large one, and then a smaller image actually overlapping on the top. That's intentional, so I'm in a good place with that. Over here, however, this text block box, when I click on this, you'll see the blue lines are showing that it takes up this entire space. And at the moment, I have a button overlapping it. Squarespace tell us don't do that unless you intentionally want things to overlap. So I'm going to tidy this up, in fact. I'm going to shrink the text box so it only takes up more or less the room that I would like it to have. And in this case, I'm going to move my button um, down and across somewhat. Uh, and you'll see here, by checking the blue lines surrounding each block, you can make sure that things are not overlapping unless that is, in fact, your intention. Inside the Edit Section option that we've uh, always had for sections, this has changed a bit, and you're going to want to play around with this. But for now, especially when you're just getting started, I recommend you leave these defaults. They're fine. Just know that if you do add some extra content to your um, section and then you change your mind about it, for example, let's assume I made this text box bigger, longer here, and then I changed my mind, what we've got now is the number of rows in the section have expanded to fit what Squarespace thinks I want to do here. And you'll find when you save this, you might have some ugly empty space unless you then come back and tidy up. So I've made the box shorter again. I'm moving my button back underneath it with drag and drop. But my section still has um, some unwanted space here. So a really nice thing to do is to come into edit section. The row count here is telling you how many of these little grid rows we have. We have 14, they're not needed. So I'm just moving the slider all the way to the left. And uh, Squarespace then um, shrinks this section, kind of tidies up that empty space for us. So again, there are other things in here, but I don't think you need to worry about them for your first experiment with Fluid Engine. On the other hand, I warmly recommend that you do worry about what your site looks like on small screens and mobile devices. Unlike the previous editor that we had, the classic editor, in that case, Squarespace took our layout and rearranged it for us on a mobile size screen so that it would look pretty good. Now, great news is we can control the mobile layout but with much power comes much responsibility. And so it's really important that you go into the mobile view and check that the layout that you're happy with inside um, your desktop editor is still looking good on mobile. So let me just delete this box. I don't think we need that. Uh, and then from the top left of your screen, we're currently on desktop view. Alongside that, you've got a mobile view. When I come inside there and I look at my new Fluid Engine section, um, what you'll see here is we've got some text, that's fine, um, then a photo, then a button, then another photo. If you don't like that arrangement, it's up to you to move things around until they are more pleasing for you. And once again, it's a really good idea to make sure your blocks don't overlap unless that's what you want. Um, and just know that the text alignment that you chose on desktop is still going to apply here. So theoretically, you can, um, you can change the layout of what goes where, but the alignment properties do appear to still be inherited from that desktop view. So if in doubt, I like to make things full width um, on the mobile view. 
tidy up some space. Maybe we do want those pictures overlooking, that's fine. Again, now I've got some ugly empty space here. I would come into edit section and reduce the row count. This is now applying to the mobile view. So it's nice to know that we can adapt that separately. I'll come back now to desktop view. One more tip from me. Squarespace have given us a desktop view and a mobile view. They have not yet, or not yet, uh, thought about giving us a tablet view. That means it's imperative that when you've made changes to your pages inside Fluid Engine, that you check how they look on a tablet. I have seen some undesirable and unwanted effects at tablet size. Uh, a good tip I have for you at this stage, if you want the button here to align, um, maybe centered under this piece of text, um, on a mobile view or a tablet view, if you make sure that the button area takes up the same number of columns, you'll see this here, this is now the same number of columns as the text area, that seems to greatly improve the chances that things will line up and align nicely inside a tablet view. Now that's not applied here on the mobile phone because I had previously um, dragged and changed it. So that's a good example of where you'll definitely want to come into mobile view and, uh, and check how things are lining up there. And then equally, um, don't neglect to take a look on a tablet and make sure you're happy with that as well. So that's your quick beginner's guide to Fluid Engine. Lots there to play with. Um, I think this is a really promising development from Squarespace, and I hope you have fun with it. Once again, I'm Pauline. You can find me at paulinewiles.com.